Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. Hello guys, it's me. Welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever with Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew, here to teach you tonight the unchangeable Word of God. But I will say this, we are not live tonight. This is a recording that I will post so that it will show up later on during the show. Because me and Mrs. TGIF are being so immensely, immensely blessed by God this week that we are doing something tonight together. And uh, so I'm still here with you. It is a recorded show. But I am still here with you. I love you. She loves you. And guess what? God loves you. And guess what else? You can't do nothing about that. You can't do nothing about me, about me the wife, and God loving you. You can't do nothing about that. Because we love you. And so does God. So, with that being said, how is everyone doing here in podcast land? Good evening, podcast land. As they used to say on Good Morning Vietnam. One of my favorite movies. If you've never seen Good Morning Vietnam, go get it. Go see it. It is phenomenal. Good Morning Vietnam is a great old movie with Robin Williams. He reminds me of me because he's a radio host. And he does radio stuff and he does a, po- a show on the radio for the military like like I do on the podcast every day. Now, it's not that he does a Christian broadcast or nothing because he doesn't. But he still does a radio broadcast in the military. So it's a great movie. There, Don't get me wrong. There are, is a lot of, you know, dirty jokes and curse words in there. But the ultimate goal of the movie, the ultimate plot of the movie is a very good movie. A very good plot. And it just, just goes to show how everyone likes what he does and stuff. So go see it. If you've never seen it before, get it and see it. It's phenomenal. With that being said, how is everyone doing today here at Podcast Land? This is TGIF's message show, and like I said, we are not live. We are recording right now, and we're going to shorten things down a little bit because right now, for me, before you hear this, you're going to hear this at 6 o'clock. So right now, when you're listening to this, it will be 6 6 o'clock when you're hearing this. But for me, right now, it's 726 a.m. because I'm getting ready to... Start my day and do some stuff. So, with that being said, I got things I need to do. So, I'm going to do it earlier today. And then post it at 6. So, when you hear it now, it'll be 6 o'clock. So, with that being said, how is everyone doing? And I hope you guys are doing phenomenal. I need you all to pray for Mr. TJF here. My hand, my right hand for some reason. And it gave me a pain today when I went to go write the message. But my hand for some reason... That's something called trigger finger, I believe it is, where my finger stays in one spot and won't go back up for a while. And that side of the hand is starting to swell up and it's starting to hurt, actually hurt. When I go to bend and stuff, my hand. So I don't know what it is, but it's it, it just needs to be prayed for. I've been trying to get it to go away. I've been I've been worshiping with it, worshiping God for the healing. Now God doesn't always heal you straight from himself. He also heals you from doctors as well. So I'm going to have to go see my doctor soon, but I'm going to have to call them and go see them and see what they can do about setting up an appointment for me. With that being said, how are you all doing? Hopefully you all enjoyed last week's Worship Saturdays. And the theme for Worship Saturdays was what? Healing. So I hope you guys enjoyed last week's Worship Saturdays. And let's get into this by starting with a few, but brief, Announcements starting with number one, go to communitycloud222 at gmail.com, spelled C O M M U N I T Y C L O U D 222 at G M A I L dot C O M. And guess what you can do right there? You can send me all of your prayer requests, or if you want me to shout to you on the podcast, send me your first name, your city, and your state, and I'll shout out to you on TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Also, be aware, guys, you can call us at 1-302-448-8443. Again, that's 1-302-448-TGIF, where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. 
Also, be aware, we're going to be doing this each and every week outside the classroom Wednesdays, where we think outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Pastor John's messages from Sunday morning Bible study, post those to the show so you guys can enjoy them, and as also so we can take his messages to outside of the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. Also, be aware we're going to be doing this each and every week now as well, Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays, where we take Pastor Lance and Ernissa Travis's messages we post those to the show as well so you can enjoy their messages as well and so we can take and get their messages outside of the classroom as well to those who need the gospel each and every day. Also, be aware, guys, we're going to be starting this real soon, the rumble where we'll be shaking the heavens, rattling the earth, and rumbling against the principalities of darkness and evil. The Bible says that we don't fight or rumble against what? Flesh and blood, but our principalities of darkness and evil. We're going to take one day out of the week, and we're going to fight, 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 pray, 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 rumble, 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 preferably at midnight. Now, why do I say preferably at midnight? Because darkness loves darkness. Let me say that to you again. Darkness loves darkness. When you look at your hand in a dark room, can you see your hand in front of your face? Of course not. Why? Because darkness loves darkness. Darkness collects. And when you turn on a light, some of the darkness is dispelled. Finally, when all the lights are turned on, all darkness is dispelled. The same thing with Jesus. When you display God's light or Jesus' light, darkness is dispelled. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, not at the poof, ta-da, here I am, at the name of Jesus, demons tremble and Satan flees. Let me say that to you again. It says in his word, at the name of Jesus, not the poof, ta-da, here I am, at the name of Jesus, Satan flees and demons tremble. So all you got to do when anything comes up after you and it comes to tempt you, you say, Jesus, and it's done. So what are we going to do on the rumble? We're going to take one day out of the week, and we're going to pray for you, we're going to pray for the listener, and we're going to pray for the government, and we're going to pray for the president. Whatever pops up, we are going to pray for it. Let's pray for this man in the White House. Lord, we humbly come before you, Lord, and we ask you to be with this man in the White House. We ask you to be with him on his every day, that when he does what he does, he does it for your glory, for what you want to happen in this in this world, not what he wants to happen. He has to be with him in health and to be with him in finance. And Lord, I ask you to direct and guide him in everything that he does. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. That is the rumble. Also, guys, be aware, we're going to be doing this each and every week. Worship Saturdays, we'll be doing nothing but worshiping God. Just praise, prayer, and worship. Grab your favorite drink. And just relax your lounge chair and enjoy the fabulous music we here have on the show. All we're going to do is just praise, prayer, and worship. That is Worship Saturdays. Also, guys, be aware that you can download Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L, available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the Aptoid Market. And what can you do on that app? Well, first off, you can listen to this very show. Second, you can make Comments with a free Spreaker.com account. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Again, it's you can make comments with a free Spreaker.com account. That's, again, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. Also, you can connect with me through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. Let me send you, let me to give you a personal TGIF life hack. So here's the scenario. You want to send an email to TGIF, but you don't want to go, Spelled C O M M U N I T Y C L O U D two 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 A G M A I L dot C O M. See how much of a breath it takes to get it out of there? Well, here's what you do download Podcast Portal again, spelled P O D C A S T space P O R T A L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the App Trade Market. And then you go into Podcast Portal and go to the right hand corner of any page, bottom right hand corner of any page, and click on the little envelope picture it looks like an envelope it's the email button click on there then click on your email client then type in your email and hit send it's that easy but it seems hard at first but then when you go back hit the always button though because when you go back to it again guess what as soon as you click the email button that quick it's that easy it sends you straight to the email you type in your email you hit send so it's that easy it's click the email button Type in your email, hit send, you're done. 
But you got to click that always button. Also, what you can do on podcast portals, you can listen to the play buttons. 95 Fight the Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. KJIC out of Texas. My former church, Evangel Christian Churches. And my new church that I attend here in Ravenna, Ohio, Portage Community Chapel. So with Evangel, you just click on their Evangel button. It takes you to their YouTube page. And with Portage Community Chapel, now you click on their uh Portage, their button, and you just t- it takes you right to their Vimo page. So you can listen and see their videos as well, but you can also move around the screen. And if you're chatting with people on the app, you can do that as well. Also, be aware my favorite part of the app is the portal chat feature where you can communicate with not just me or the co host, but everyone who, who owns that app. Everyone in the world who owns that app, if 500 people own that app, you can communicate around the world, 500 different people. And that's my favorite part of the app. You can also send pictures. You can also send a picture straight from your phone. But here's what you got to do. You take the picture with your camera. You save it to your phone. You go into Portal Chat. You then click the camera on the bottom. You select the picture you want to put into the Portal Chat. And then you hit send. It's that easy. You can't take a selfie with it, but you can take a picture beforehand and then post that picture into the portal chat feature. Now, we want to get to know who you are a little bit. We want to know a little bit about your day. So show us a little bit about yourself. If you're in France, you want to show us the Eiffel Tower, take a picture of the Eiffel Tower and show us. We'd like to know who you are. Now, we don't want to know every single minute of what you do. There are some people out there who who will post, I had 25 peas, I chewed them 25 times, I walked 25 feet to the couch and I sat on the couch. <laughs> That's not what we're trying to do here. We still want to get to know who you are. It goes like this. If I, own, if, I, if I pastor a church, but I know nobody in that church, can I pray for them? Absolutely not. Why? Because I don't know who they are. I don't know how to pray for them, who to pray for, or what. So let us know who you are a little bit. Let us get to know you a little bit so we can get to know who you are, what you need prayer for, and what is going on in your life because that is the most beautiful thing we can do is to get to know each and every one of our listeners. Also, what you can do is that portal chat feature. Like I said, it's beautiful, it's awesome, and you're going to enjoy it. I know you will. That is Podcast Portal. Also, guys, one last announcement. Tell your Alexa devices, say, Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal where you wear you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices as well. We also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, ask Alexa to open Podcast Portal and she'll say welcome to, welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements. There you go, guys. That was our announcements for today. Let's get into our first song of the show, our main song, which is Open the Eyes of My Heart by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes, come on. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart.
That once again, guys, was open the eyes of my heart, Lord, by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Let's get into the word for today's episode. And like always, this is Monday's episode. I didn't do a throwback. I am not live, but I am recording this for tonight because me and Mrs. TJ are working on a project tonight that will involve such blessings from God. So we're going to get into the word. And today's message is entitled Three Things We Must Do. Again, it's called Three Things We Must Do. In our walk with Christ, there are three things, well, more than three things, but three main things that we must do. Let's look at a few scriptures. First one is at Romans 12, 1 through 2. So let's go to Romans 12, 1 through 2. And yes, my Bible pages are marked. But I can no longer say, yes, Brian, my Bible pages are not marked. Or yes, Brian, my Bible pages are marked. Because guess what? Brian is no longer living with us. He went to go be with God, and I never knew that. So, but he is in heaven. Yes, Brian, up there in heaven, my Bible pages are marked. And our first scripture is Romans. Oops. Sorry about that. My... A uh, pop filter went down on me. Romans 12, 1 through 2. So let's go to Romans 12. We're at Romans 12 because I marked them. Chapter 1, Romans 12, and it's starting at 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, or brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So the first thing it says it says in in this in this book right here in Romans chapter twelve verse is one and two. The first thing it says it says I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. First thing it says is to present yourselves, or to what. It says to present yourselves as a living sacrifice to God. Now, my message title for today is Three Things We Must Do. Hold on, just for a second, guys. I am sorry, my microphone's about to fall to the floor today. So these are three things that we must do as Christians on a regular, everyday basis. Okay, let me fix my microphone so it doesn't fall to the floor. There you go. It's tightening up real good now. There we go. So the first thing we must do as Christians is what? First thing we must do is present ourselves, our bodies, as a living what sacrifice to God. Now, let me present that to you in a way that the message is talking today. Because our message is entitled, Three Things We Must Do. Okay, so. Romans 12, 1 through 2. We m- First, we are to offer ourselves as what? A living sacrifice. 
In other terms, we are to live for God. We can live for God in parentheses. So the first thing that we must do is present ourselves as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God, which means that we must live for God. Now the question is how? Now the question is how do we live for God? First thing we must do for living for God is in Revelations 3.20. So I mark that Bible page as 1.1. So Romans, not Romans, Revelations. Chapter 3, verse 20. Starting at, let me find you here because I got my microphone right in my side of view. Okay, so Revelations chapter 3, starting at, the Old Testament is easier, like I always say, to read through. Sorry, verse 20. But the New Testament is so confusing. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in him and dine with him, or as the King James says, sup with him, and he with me. So it says right here in verse 20 of Revelation chapter 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and dine with him and he with me. So it says that if he says, I'm standing at the door. Now, what door is Jesus standing at? There's a, there's a lot of doors in this world that Jesus could be standing. He could be standing at your front door, your back door. It could be It could be the door of your church. The side door of your church, there's a lot of doors that he could be standing at. But see, the thing about that is he's standing at the door of your heart. You know, your heart is a place that Jesus wants to live in. So how do we live for God? By opening the door, letting him in, giving Jesus permission to live in our hearts. And it's easy. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Repeat after me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of all my wrongdoings, Lord, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And come into my heart. I open that door. Come into my heart and be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you do that right now, guess what? You're now living for God. But there's more to it after that. You know, you got to, there's more about that afterwards. And we're going to get into that in our message too. It's not all about just, you know, ask God into your heart, sinner's prayer, you're good, you're done, you're saved. Absolutely not. There's more to the sinner's prayer than just asking him into your heart. That's a start. That's the beginning of everything. Our second scripture comes from Matthew 22, 38. So let's go to Matthew 22 and 38. So chapter 22 through 38. Chapter 22, 38. So 38 through 39, I should say. Chapter 22, starting at verse 38. This is the first and greatest commandment. Okay? So, the well, I'm going to read beforehand. I'm going to read 37 because we should. Uh, Jesus said, said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Again, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. That's, that is another way that we live for God. We, we love God with all our heart, soul, and might. See, living for God is not just asking in your heart. It's also that, what? That relationship that you have with Christ. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, then you, he, he's not living in your heart. That's the main key. It's to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. It's the first commandment. <clears throat> and it says that right here. And it says, that is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Now, I'm going I'm to make a lot of people feel uncomfortable right now when I say it this way. Love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible says to what? To love everyone. Dr. Prophet Larry Rell says, shower the people you love with love. But how about showering the people you don't love so much with love? How about showing love to those who despitefully wrong used you? Or how about when that bully in school beat you up, you just say, you know what? I want nothing to do with you, but I love you and I forgive you. But stay away from me. You know, what about that that family member who did something to you? You got to love them. You don't have to like them or let them back into your life. You got to love them. So love those. How about loving those that you don't love so much with love? And guess what? The Bible says so. It says love your neighbor. It says right here, the first commandment. Now the second and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Think about that. If you love yourself, you should love your neighbors that way. Now, you can't say you don't love yourself and then love your neighbors. They don't work that way. But you got to love your neighbors as yourself. If you think highly of yourself, I'm a, I am a chaplain, a minister, a Christian. If I love myself like I do, and then I don't show that same love to my neighbor, I'm disobeying God. No matter what he's done to me, no matter what he's done to my family, I don't care, and forgive me for saying this, if Susie Smith, if Susie Smith's, ma, Susie Smith's, Smith's mom got killed by somebody, Susie Smith should love that person no matter what. She shouldn't have to like him. She shouldn't have to let him back into her, her life. But she should what love him. Why? Because the love of God changes people. Just because they committed something wrong doesn't mean they go to heaven. Just because they, well, they killed my mom. They shouldn't be in heaven right now because they did something to my mom. My mom. Well, think about it. What have you done against somebody that was wrong? What did you do against somebody that was bad that you shouldn't make it to heaven for, but God died for you? You're not the only one. Just because they start out as a sinner and don't start out as a Christian from birth doesn't mean that they don't get to go to heaven just like you do. They still get a chance to go. God wishes that everyone not perish, but have eternal life. He wishes that everyone not have not perish, but have eternal life. So what that means is, it means is to love your neighbor as what? Yourself. Because when you start loving your neighbor like that, no matter what they've done to you, they'll say, wait a minute, I just did this, this, and this to that person, and they're over there loving on me? Why? What did I, what, what? I don't deserve that. Why are they loving on me for? And then all of a sudden God will give someone else the opportunity to come back into their lives and preach to them. And they'll say, that's why. Because God loves them and they want God to love me. And then later on, don't get me wrong, you will still be mad at what happened, but they'll at least say, look, I am sorry for what I did. Please forgive me or whatnot. And then they'll really become, hopefully they'll become saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and be doing the same thing that you did to them. But see, you can't do, you can't, they can't become Christian or become saved at, at any time if you don't do what the Bible says, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. If you show any hate to any of your neighbors, the first thing they're not going to say is, oh, well, she's a Christian. No, they're going to say, well, she's a hater. She hates me. So if you love on them, that gives them the opportunity to know the sovereign God of the sovereign God, which is Jesus Christ. Gives them the opportunity to know the truth about who Jesus is so they can be free just like you are from the burning of your sins. So the second thing that we must do as Christians, first thing we must do is what? The first thing we must do is what? Live for God by, number one, letting him into our hearts. Now, that's not the only thing. But the second thing that we must do is what? Love others. So we are to offer uh, our bodies a living sacrifice, live for God in parentheses. I'm reading the first set of notes. Now, how do we live for God, Revelations? By letting Jesus into our hearts. By, by living for God, we can then show love to other people. Because how, question, can we, 
Can we then love others or can we show love to others if we don't live for God? Yes, but would that be true, genuine love? No, because the first thing that's going to happen when somebody cuts you off is you mother scratch your why I oughta, and you know how many people do that. They go, you mother scratch your why I oughta, and the next thing you know, they're saying all kinds of perverse language they don't need to be saying right now. <laughs> and let me say this again, some of you out there do that. I'm not naming any names. I don't know anybody out there who does, but I know some of you do that. Why? Because it's second nature. We were born, as Pastor John used to say, we were born into sin. It is second nature to us to want to curse and want to slander people's names. Think about it. Let me ask you a question. Tell me five good things about your neighbor. I'll give you about 10, 20, 20 minutes. I actually give you... 10, 20 years. Now, next question is say something. Say five negative things about your neighbor. I'll give you two seconds. I guarantee you, you come up with five different things and not even that. Think about it. It's easier to think and to do negative things because we were born into sin. It's easier to sin when you're born into it. See, if you weren't born into sin, you wouldn't be so, it wouldn't be so easy to sin. But we're born into it from birth, as Pastor John used to say, we're born into sin. So the second thing we must do is what? Love others. Love others as ourselves. Why? Because that might that will in turn show that hey, God loves you. Now, does that mean that every single person that you show love to is going to be saved? Absolutely not. But if you do not, and you hold any unforgiveness in your heart, you will not make it into heaven. Why? Because it says no sin will be permitted in heaven. And unforgiveness is a sin. So can we love, can we love others if we don't live for God? Can you truly love others if you don't live for God? Of course, the answer is no. Why? Because... The Christ who lives in us makes us loving towards others. In fact, the thing is, if God lives in you, that makes you loving. You can't not have Christ in your life if you're not. You can't have, you can't show true love if you don't have Christ in your life because Christ makes us loving. Because with Christ, the first thing that happens when someone cuts you off, when someone's does something to you or says something mad about, negative about you, the first thing you're going to do, the first thing you should do is, look, God, I am sorry, but I want to say negative things, but forgive me, Lord, for wanting to think that. And Lord, bless them. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, what's the first thing that Jesus did before he even passed away? He said, look. He says, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. They have no clue what they're doing, Father. Forgive them for what they're doing. Jesus forgave them. Why? Because He and the Father were one. It's just like you and Jesus are one. Jesus lives in you. That makes you and Jesus one. And what that means is it doesn't mean that you're trying to be God. It just means that that Jesus, the Christ that is in you, makes you loving. Why? Because when someone does something to you, the first thing you're going to do is, okay, God, you know what just happened? Help me. I need it. You're not going to want to go. The first thing is not going to want to come out of your mouth is you mother scratch your wire I ought to. No, the first thing that's going to want to come out of your mouth since you are of Christ and of, you know, of the liturgy of Christ and are his children and disciples, the first thing that's going to want to come out of your mouth is, Lord, Lord, have mercy. You need help me, Father. I am I am really mad right now. Forgive me for being mad like this and forgive them for they not know what to do. You, If you don't have Christ in you, you're just going to say some things that you don't need to be saying. It's going to escalate and get real mad. You two are going to be mad at each other. And then you're going to split ways. And it's going to be the end of the story. Here's a quick story that my pastor's wife, Dr. Cheryl Piscopo, used to, told before. And mom, we love you there at Evangel. We, we hope to come see you soon. With that being said, there's two brothers who own the store, retail store. And... Uh, one day, twenty bucks came. Uh, twenty bucks came up missing, and 
The brothers argued about, you stole, no, you stole, you this, no, you were at the cash register, you were at the cash register. So they got so mad at each other for that 20 bucks being stolen, blaming each other, that they put a wall between each part of the store, and half the store is his, and half the store was his brother's. And for years, we were so mad at each other, never once spoke to each other. About 10, 20 years down the road, a man came into the store saying, hey, I felt so bad when I stole that 20 bucks from you. I want to give you this back. And here's a little extra. So none of the brothers stole the money to begin with. But they said some stuff out of heated anger, which then led to them not talking, arguing, and fighting. And not talking. And But yet the truth was someone else stole the money that was there as a customer. What What I'm trying to say is, is when you have Christ in your life, they didn't. They probably did have. They did not have Christ in their life in that story because they got so mad at each other over a twenty dollar bill. And when you have Christ in your life, you won't accuse them or say things or be mean or say rotten stuff to them. You won't curse them out or nothing. You say, "Look, Lord, I am mad. You know the situation. You know what's going on. You deal with it. And if it is because of you know he stole something." then deal with it. If it's not, then you deal with the culprit who did what he did or she what she did. But the first thing that should want to come out of your mouth as a Christian is luck. Lord, you know I am mad. You take care of it. And guess what? God will then take care of it for you. But see, if Christ is not in your life and not living in your heart, how can you be loving towards other people? You can't. And our third scripture is Mark 519. Mark chapter 5, verse 19. So let's go to Mark chapter 5, verse 19. My hands have an issue today, so I can't crumple up paper, right? Mark chapter 5, starting at verse, where is it at here? I got to find it real quick. Starting at verse... Sorry about that, my glasses hit the uh, pop filter. Starting at verse 19. Verse 19. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him. So it's saying first as Jesus. It says, first off, it says, however. Let me read it again. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him. Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Okay, so the first thing it says in this scripture says, However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. And how he has had compassion on you. So the first thing as Christians we must do is what? Live for God. The second thing we must do is what? Is we must love others. And the third thing we must do is what? Transform others by letting them know what God has done in our own lives. So we need to tell other people about Jesus. That's the other thing I wanted to mention earlier about when I said that's not the only thing. It's just saying the sinner's prayer. It's not. Loving others is one more part of that being a Christian. And the second thing is that we must do is what? Is to what? Tell people about what God has done for us. If we tell people what God has done for us, and they too will want to know what's going on in our lives and hopefully come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It, it, my notes, my quick notes that I put down on paper, I wrote in quick marker when uh, I heard these words, was transform others through the word of our what? Testimony. I love it that way. Transform others through Christ 
transform others through Christ, through the word of what our testimonies. How many of you have a testimony out there that God's brought you through something? Let me tell you this. God's brought me through a lot. I found Jesus. Let me say this to you, and I don't care if you want to judge me for it, but I found Jesus in a 9 by 5 jail cell. I literally was on wit's end, and I told us at my, uh, I told us at my, uh, my last uh, service at Evangel for good, not last service as I'll never show up again, but my last service as being part of that ministry on a regular every Sunday, Wednesday, and all that basis. And I said to, uh, and I said to the congregation, which we're going to tell you now, I was at my last wit's end. I went and had five different violation of probation, violations of probation that got that that the state of Michigan wanted to throw the book at me. And you know what? Most of them were not violation of probation. It was not a violation of my probation. Was not. And I'll give you an example of one. I used to have a system. It was called the Superjoy 3. And it was a video game system that allowed you to play old school Nintendo games like Duck Hunt and Mario Super Mario Brothers, the original Mario Brothers, and Clay Shooting, and Hogan's Alley, and Wild Gunman, and all the classics. Things you don't see no more. And those were great games. And an accessory that came with it was a light gun that all you had to do was aim it at the screen. You could shoot the ducks, you could shoot the clay shoots, you can do the uh, Hogan's Alley and Wild Gunman. And it was just, it was a toy gun that had a big orange barrel tip around it had a long cord down the it was it was really a long cord and my my tether agent at the time comes storming up the stairs i remember this day to a t comes storming up the stairs and her high heels kicked down the stairs as she's storming up she goes she said, i want to make sure you're home and you're doing what you need to be doing in and i'm over there on my bed sitting there and i go yeah i'm here I go, thank you, have a good day. And and, um, and I got my game system out. I was trying to fix it because it wasn't working. She goes, and what's this? She picks up my little light gun. She sticks it in her little purse. And she says, I'm going to have to see that you get a violation of probation with this thing. And she comes storming down the stairs, picks up her shoe and gets outside and goes. But finally, when I got to my my uh, my judge with all five different violation of my probation, violations of probation, which none of them stuck, none of them, because God knew otherwise. He looked at that guy and he goes, that is not a violation of probation. He goes, that is not a weapon. He goes, how in the world is he going to do anything with that with a kid? Because she tried saying, uh, well, she tried saying, well, how... Uh, how how is it if, if if a kid comes by and he points that at them, or uh, you know a member of society comes and he points that at them? How are they going to know the difference? It, he says it's got a long cord. Everyone can see it's got a long cord. What's he going to do? Stick the cord in his pocket and hold the gun and pretend it's a real one? There's no way that that I could have done anything with that thing. It was just a toy gun. It was a gun that was used for duck hunt. It was just for fun. But she tried getting me a violation of probation with it. There's five different violations, I told us at the church, that God knew was not violations. And I skipped through each and every one of them. I never once had a violation I ended up going to prison for, for any reason. I've been to jail. Let me tell you, I've been locked up 12 years of my life. And like I said, I found Jesus in a 9 by 5 jail cell. Sitting there with five violation of probations, waiting, waiting to be sentenced to go to prison for the, for a very long time for the things that for the things that weren't violations to begin with. Okay, but then God had other plans, and God knew what I was going to do in my life, and God knew this podcast was going to succeed. I didn't know anything about podcasting then. I didn't know anything about anything. I just knew that. I go to church because I have to. Not because I love God. Not because I, I honor God. Not because I know who God is and what God's done in my life. I knew nothing about God at that moment. Pastor Boss, no, Pastor Goble came up to me one day. Well, the Pastor Goble, Pastor Goble came into the uh, cell and did some church services with us. 
And then after leaving the cell, a guard came out and uh guard says, uh he says, uh Mr Mr. Kunslick, he says, You got a visitor? I said, A visitor? I said, My mom ain't coming down here to see me, my grandma ain't coming down here to see me. How do I in hell do I got a visitor? How in the heck do I got a visitor? Excuse my French there, even though it's not French. But how do I got a visitor, I said. He says, you got a visitor. So I I got out of the cell, and all the inmates were looking at me funky, like, you better not be doing anything funky. But I walked out, and they took me into this little room, and there was Pastor Goble. He goes, hi, Andrew. I go, Pastor. I said, hi. I go, and how do you know my name? He goes, well, I talked to the the counselor of the jail, and uh, we spoke a little bit. And uh, he says, I want to get to know you a little bit and get to know what's going on in your life and why you're here and stuff. He goes, I know, I know a little bit about you. He says, but I want to hear from you. So I, I spoke to him a little bit. And uh, he says, well, Jesus wants to forgive you for all of what you've done. Which technically, in in actuality, and he knows this to a T right now, that what was actually said did not actually happen. Because see, things happened when I was 12 years old that caused me to go to, to the youth homes and the placements and the High Plains Youth Center, the Havenwick Hospital, all these weird places that I, I don't want no one else ever going. I was just forced by the judge at the time to go to these places because they thought I needed treatment which really all they did in those places was just drug me up on Ritalin all day long. And it was just it was just a mess. It was something I don't want to have to remember, but I, I remember it to keep myself humble. But as I was trying to say is, I ended up uh, going into this room with Pastor Goble and we were talking. He goes, well, Jesus wants to forgive you. He goes, I know your situation. I know, know your circumstance, but he still wants to forgive you. He says, you ready to give your heart to God? I said, yeah, because I said, I said to myself, there's nothing worse that can happen. I said, I said, there's nothing else worse that can happen. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going on five violation of probations. The worst that can happen right now by giving my heart to God is what? Is that God, is that I can just go to prison. Nothing else worse can happen to me. Well, I gave my heart to God. And I've, I knelt by a plastic chair. He says, get on your knees for me. He put his hand over me. He says, and he started praying. And he says, repeat this after me. I repeated the sinner's prayer. He goes, now, the next goal in your life is to start witnessing to other people God has done for you. And so that very moment in my 9 by 5 jail cell, technically, in the room, but my 9 five by 5 jail cell as I was waiting on five violations of probations. Guess what? I finally found Jesus. Well, Jesus found me, and he saved me with compassion. And therefore, when I went with all five violations of probations, guess what? God seen through each and every one of them, and none of them stuck. I got out and all the inmates were looking at me going, so how much time did you get? I said, zero, I'm going home. Each and every single time. Hey, how much time did you get? Zero, I'm going home. Hey, how much time did you get? Zero, I'm going home. Five different times. They were mad at me because I was the only one in that room in the courtroom going, not going to prison. And God knew why. And God knew all the things that was happening in my life. Therefore, nothing happened to me. And I ended up uh, getting to know who Jesus was, really getting to know who Jesus was, becoming a minister, and then doing my, you know, almost now seven-year podcast. And there have been other things in my life that God has, uh, you know, done for me in my life. I no longer have to register as a sex offender, which is a blessing right there, because at one point in time, like I said, at 12 years old, what they said about me and the little girl was not true. And so I had to register as a sex offender for that reason. But God ultimately used that as my 
testimony. He didn't, he didn't use it for me to teach me a lesson. He used it as my testimony. God will never, let me say this to you, God will never bring turmoil and torture into your life to teach you a lesson. He'll bring it into your life for a testimony so later on you can testify what God has done for you. And that's the thing. So now, now that I've saved and I got saved, now I can testify what God has done for me. And when I can testify what God has done for me, I don't know about you all out there right now. Someone out there probably needed to hear my testimony again to know that God wants to save and forgive you. And if you're out there and God is pulling you to say, hey, look, you need to be saved. You need to come to Christ. Do it. Everyone needs to come to Christ. If there's someone out there who needs to hear my testimony, there it is. There it is. Is it pretty? Absolutely not. Is it going to get me likes, subscribes, ratings, and downloads? Probably not. Are, am I going to have a few people who might go, you know, I didn't know that about Chaplin. I think I'm going to stop listening to him now. Absolutely, probably. But you know what? It is okay. Why is it okay? Because it's my testimony. It's my story of who I am in a nutshell. It's me. It's the memoirs of my life in about 2.5 minutes. So there you go. It is my testimony of what God has done for me. So the first thing we got to do is what? Is we got to live for God. And by living for God, we can then love others. Because you can't love others if you don't live for God. You can. But you won't truly live for God. You won't truly love others if you do not live for God. And the first thing we must do, third thing we must do is transform others through Christ through the word of what our testimony of what God has done for us. And transforming them means is to what? Is to bring them with the help of Jesus to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's to bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The same power that you have in you is what you're bringing them to. And when you bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, guess what? You transform them through your testimony. God transformed them for you. What you do is you tell them what you what God has done for you. They then say, hey, okay, if God can do that for you, then he can do that for me. Therefore, God can then turn, change their hearts, turn them around, and bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Let me say this to you. Just because someone is an atheist doesn't mean they can stay an atheist the rest of their lives. There is a gentleman I know of who used to be a Jehovah's Witness. He still is. And we all call him Simon at Liberties. But Simon was one of my my friends. And I just, I loved Simon because, you know, we ha we always had debates about how only 177,000 people are going to, how only 177 Christians are going to heaven and how God's name is strictly Jehovah and, you know, he died on a stake, he this, he that. And then we, we get into all kinds of arguments about about how he's Jehovah Witness and that's the true religion of God. And and so finally, finally we got to talking one day. He goes, Andrew, I believe that God died on a stake, not the cross. I said, okay, Simon. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, what's a cross made from? He goes, wood. I said, what's the stake made from? He goes, wood. I go, where does wood come from? He goes, a tree. I said, can we just agree that God died on the tree? He goes, that's fine with me. So we agreed that God died on the tree. But everything else, he just he just didn't like what I was trying to talk to him. Then one day he went into a cave for some odd reason. He was he was kind of off there. Don't get me wrong. Everyone at Liberty says, including me some days. But he, he went into a cave somewhere, into a desert island somewhere, went into a cave, and lived there for about a couple of years, one or two years, and came back. And he says, Andrew, everything you said to me was absolute truth. He goes, I had a he says, I had an intervention with God. God showed up and told me everything you said to be absolute one hundred percent truth. He says, But I still believe that God died on the stake. I said, Look, he died on the tree and that's all there is to it, and that's all we care about right now. 
I said, it it doesn't matter if we disagreed that he died on here or died on there. As long as we both know that he died for the remission of sins, that's all that matters. Now, me telling you that story is because of this. He was a diehard Jehovah. Just like I said, if someone's an atheist, doesn't mean they're gonna stay an atheist, doesn't mean they can stay an atheist their whole life. He was a diehard Jehovah's Witness. And what happened? God changed him. He didn't stay a diehard Jehovah's Witness. Now, he still is a Jehovah's Witness, but he's a Jehovah's Witness for testimony only. He don't believe what they preach, but he's a testimony to the rest of the Jehovah's Witness. So he, God changed his heart. By telling him what God's done for me, ultimately transformed him by the word of my testimony. Through the word of my testimony from God himself, God transformed him through the word of my testimony. Therefore, the first thing we must do as Christians is what? Live for God. By giving him our hearts. And by doing so, by living for God, we can love others, which we got to love others. And the third thing we must do is, we must what? Tell them what God has done for us. Transform them with God through the word of our testimonies. Our testimony is so powerful, just the fact that they see that you no longer either drink, do drugs, you stop looking at pornography, you stop lusting over women, you are married, you now have kids or whatnot, it's like me. I shock all of my friends because I'm now married. I no longer want to do things with other men. I desire to have children one day. There are things in my life that I never, ever thought I would actually do. Even my friends never thought of this idea. And yet I'm here, married, loving my wife, you know, wanting to have children. You know, God's blessing us real soon with something that I can't say. It's more blessing us with blessings that are just immense, immenseless. But you know, it shocks everyone because they looked at me and thought of, yeah, he was gay, he was a fruit, and he did this and this and this, and he didn't want children, he never wanted to get married to a woman. And they thought all this stereotypical stuff, because that's the way I used to be, to where now it shocks them that I'm even married. And they're like, wow, we never thought you'd get married, man. And that's the thing. When you tell them the word of your testimony, it shocks them so much that they say, you know what? Hey, I, I, I need to know what's going on with your life so I can get some of that too. So give them the word of your testimony. Now, not everyone's going to be saved through your word. It might take a couple words from other people too, but not everyone's going to be saved from what you say. And there are some people who will never just, who are going to be atheists for the rest of their lives. God will give them the opportunity to change, but they will not accept it. Now, some will be changed by God and some will not be changed. It all depends on you know, how bad of a grasp the enemy has on them. If he has a real bad hold on them, then yeah, they're not going to be saved or sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost like you and I. But that is okay. because It's not okay that they, they won't be saved, but it's okay in the sense that God knows. And God knows that we're trying. God knows that we're doing the best. We don't have to have everyone saved just because we speak to them. God knows our heart and God knows what we've been doing and what we're trying to do. So with that being said, hey, that's our word for today. I love each and every one of you. And uh, God loves you. And Mrs. TGIF and I both love you. So with that being said, let's get into, let's do four more songs. We'll do three. We'll pray and then we'll do the last one. Since I don't sense it's going to be a short, quick show today because we got to do a few things later on, we're going to only do a few songs for today, like four of them, five of them, one earlier and four now, because it's going to be a short show. But next week, look forward to, I believe we'll have eight of them play on Monday nights, four on Kingdom Collaboration, of course, and four of them for the... Uh, Pastor John's message as well. So with that being said, let's get into our next song, which is simply entitled Celebrate by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy Celebrate. Celebrate the Lord. 
That was celebrated by none other than the K. Daniels Beer and Truth Worship Band. Let's get into our next song, which is I, I Give You Jesus by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy, I Give You Jesus. If the ship of your life is tossing on a sea of strife, you need someone. If you feel so all alone, your house is not a home. If you feel that life isn't fair And there's no one left to share All those lonely days and nights When things just don't turn out right And you need someone to care Just someone to be there You need someone I 
the pressures all around keep your spirits to the ground you need someone if your body is in pain your health you can't regain you need someone And if sometimes when you have tried With all the strength you had inside And it seemed that you had failed Remember on the cross Christ nailed All that bitterness and grief To give you peace Sweet release He is that someone that you need I give you Jesus He's the peace that passes all understanding I give you Jesus He's the perfect love that casteth out all fear That, once again, guys, was I Give You Jesus by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Let's get into our next song, and then we'll pray, and then we'll do our last song. And our next song is I Do Declare by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Enjoy, I Do Declare. Then we will shout 
say goodbye Well, I do declare That the day is coming When we shall be Once again, guys, was I do declare by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. One of the great, great singers we have here on the show is the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. And let's do this one like we always do. We are going to pray, pray, pray. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we got to come before you again lord and we got to to not just learn about your word but also to worship you in spirit and in truth and lord as we depart our ways we ask you to write this word on the tablets of our heart that when we depart it will not depart from us that lord when we sep- go our separate ways that you stay with us and you continue with us until the next time we get to meet up together lord i thank you lord that you're blessing everyone to of my voice that it not be what selfish, not one of those I just have to have because I have to. Whether I needed to accomplish something in my life to get to work, if it's a car, or whatever the case is, Lord, give them their heart's desires that it not be what selfish. And Lord, heal everyone from the tops of their heads listening right now, and they're going to listen from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes like I have, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal my mom's arm, Lord, that's not frozen again. And heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that's not bad no more. And Lord, heal them from diseases they contracted themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, or herpes, why? When you heal them, Lord, it shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. And it shows them that you're real, Lord. I'm reminded of it and that you're alive, too. I'm reminded of a scripture, Lord, that says you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door. It says you passed through the door because you're all spirit at the moment. He said, look, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger to my side and see them, God. What did Thomas say? Do he got on his knees and said, truly you are the Son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say I have to see to believe it, because they'll say, If you did it then you'll do it again. Because I'm reminded of another scripture where it says, In your word, you're the same God yesterday. No, so you're the same God yesterday and today. Now, so you're the same God yesterday, today, and for whatever. But show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say, I have to see it to believe it. And the scripture that I was trying to say before, what did you say after Tom's got on his knees? said, you are truly the Son of God. So blessed are those who have seen and believed. But it doesn't stop this. It's blessed are those who have not seen and believed, but yet still believe. So show them now. So when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say, I have to see it to believe it. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Our very last song of the show is, is, we're going up to the high places by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Enjoy, we're going up to the high places. We've been deceived by the devil too long. Tonight we're gonna tell that 
That once again, guys, as we're going up to the high places by none other than Dr. Tom Ray. Let's, like we always do, first off, we'll remind you of a couple things. Download that app. It is wonderful. It is phenomenal. You can do all this fun and wonderful things. Also, ask your Alexa device to say, open Podcast Portal. And she'll say, welcome to, welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices, as well as your video Alexa devices as well. So ask your Alexa device to open Podcast Portal. She's ask your Alexa device to open Podcast Portal. She say, "Welcome to, welcome back to Podcast Portal." And guys, that is it. That is our show for today. Hope you thoroughly enjoyed that, and I will see you again soon. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to one, trust the Lord in all your ways; two, lean not to your own understandings; and three, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Thank you, and. Good night.